Well, I'm just telling you, just when I walked in today, I mean, all my anxiety left. I mean, I, there's something <laughs> about this space that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till we start that making you work hard. Ah. <laughs> That's the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So to this day, Saturday program serves, well now it serves about a little over 200 students annually with free art classes, uh, painting, drawing, sculpture, graphic design, architecture, sound composition, portfolio preparation, all free of charge that run full days for two semesters during the academic year. The STEM Saturdays program, which we're piloting next semester, is a 10-week program uh, where we take the students from 2D and 3D visualization, both hand drawing and computer-aided drafting uh, in the first module, and then we progress to computer programming, digital electronics, microcontrollers, uh, we'll have 3D printing and laser cutting and mm. that would be for the first half of the the uh, program during the second half the students have to envision a product that they want to prototype and use the skills that they were taught during the first five weeks to realize this uh, this product and at the end of those five weeks so at the end of the entire program they'll have a presentation that they'll give in front of a panel of judges almost like Shark Tank. Well, what's interesting is that you're starting, you're, you started your commentary with the Saturday STEM, visually, sort of a visual jumping off point, you know, visualizing going to 3D, going to 3D mm -hmm. printing, all that. Um, and you just ended it by doing sculpture, mm -hmm. 3D visualization in another way. So I think Peter Cooper was right that the Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art, this cross-disciplinary, syncretic kind of reality, is being reaffirmed with the new technologies. What we're doing in engineering is we're trying to expand the number of, of students in these underrepresented groups, in minority groups, in socioeconomic groups in our neighborhood, bring those students into the uh, engineering school uh, and um, immerse them in hands-on technical, very rigorous work that will give them a leg up in finding a college, going to college, uh, making a living. I think the issue is how do you make it possible for somebody who comes from educational absence or lack of, of real structure, how do you make it possible for them to own whatever the discipline is? to own their own future, mm -hmm. to own the possibilities that are in front of them, and that's supporting them. I think also one of the challenges is that of the psychosocial, psychological social where, you know, I, I don't come up from a family of, of privilege. How can I possibly program a computer? How could I work on these How electronics? How can I even go to college? How could I yeah. How can I even go to college? What does that mean? How do you do it? And, and so the, these programs are, are here so that students can see the opportunities in, in front of them. Maybe they don't go into art. Maybe they don't go into engineering. But at least they see what the college environment is like. It, uh, it gives them a different perspective on what careers are available to them, and it expands their horizons. We don't have professional teachers in the classes for the most part we have undergraduate teams teaching and that provides a very special kind of support also that it's closer in age mm -hmm. so there's a sense that you know just one step further and I could be that person I could be right. that kid you know who's in right. the school now um, yeah and that's exactly the same with these mm -hmm. programs they need to see the, the teacher, the teaching assistant, the mentor who's very close in age to them and after teaching in the summer STEM program for so many years you see that difference in connection. The, the uh, students will communicate with their with the teaching assistants, our Cooper undergrads, very differently than the way they communicate with me and so sometimes I just have to step back a little bit let them communicate and then my teaching assistants come to me and tell me what's really going on the reason that it's so successful, one of the, the, uh, the, um, 
the driving forces behind the success of all of these programs is that our engineering students recognize that engineering is a service profession, that it's not just building the device, but recognizing that you're benefiting somebody's life. You're making society better somehow. I think the, the explanation of why it's important to do STEM is easier than why it's important to do art. And I think perhaps, you know, having these other organizations coming in, I mean, because the perception of making art is like, oh, that's very nice. You know, you just do a lovely picture. It's enriching. Like, where does that get you in terms of an actual job or an actual intellectual pursuit? You might be saying that this is, you know, uh, it, it's easier to justify, but, you know, to counter that, I think that <laughs> art is a necessary thing. And that's mm -hmm. why I've, I've been doing what I, what I do in the, the summer program, because they have to see that, well, you know, and they the have to... Well, that's the beginning of science, was art, observation, nature. Observation. Natural observation was mm -hmm. the beginning of sort of Euro-Western scientific so it was very much connected, but then when we move away from the classical education, yeah. the perception of art is something, s you know, well you, can, you can lose that, you can cut yeah. that. It's kind of the same thing, but a different language. Mm -hmm. Just as long as we, we got to figure out how to communicate.